theater, we can make anything happen, sort of like MacGyver of that famed TV show. In all honesty, that's kind of what happened here with Follow. Hurricane Sandy hit. We were kept from performing simply because there was no power in the East Village. And as much as we like to think that we can overcome anything, if you don't have power, we can't create that the same show. We were also shown that we can be vulnerable like anyone else. And that's also the beauty of Crystal's play, is the vulnerability that these characters find within themselves they don't even know that they have. And so it seems sort of fitting to come back at such a tragic time and do this play again. What was it like coming in today? It was really hard. We got into the city and then Hattie had a note for Daniel, which was, you're doing this for the city. You're in the city. You had this extraordinary experience and that's part of what we do today. November 3rd, 2012. He said, I don't care if you literally sob your way and maniacally laugh your way through the entire play. I would rather see that than, than anything mechanical. I live on 24th Street and the cutoff was 26. Once you hit 26, everything was just completely black. of any power at well, all, nothing. <laughs> you just don't think that you could go through such a major <laughs> catastrophe, I guess, because it's New York, you know? I mean, I think there's like a part of this city that seems really invincible, and it's not. She wrote for us, and she wrote for the space. She came to see both before she wrote Word. It really had to do with what attracted us to the particular pieces that we've been working on. And um, it had to do with uh, uh, love and loss. It's the whole theme of loneliness that moves throughout the play, mm. that we kind of all live on top of each other in Manhattan, but we don't know each other at all. I found the whole thing terrifying, um, because um, there was very little time, less than two weeks to rehearse. The play went through several drafts while we were rehearsing. I have an enormous responsibility. I'm not like the character at all. Um, in my view. Um, and we were being asked to jump off a cliff every day. My favorite part of the process was learning how to fail forward. Daniel, the director, really stressed that um, not trying to be pretty or performance based or anything like that, but to be honest and to fail and like make mistakes and really learning how to do that and trust that and feel safe enough to do that. Daniel Talbot had us do a private moment exercise with the circles of concentration. So in rehearsal, he had us really block out everything else that was going on. And it's actually really great because my character is a playwright and I've been actually working on a play that I'm working on <laughs> um, in the in the show, so I've been busting out pages because <laughs> I don't have any lines, so um, that's been a really wonderful experience. I think I've gotten to work on a number of Crystal Gilman Daniel Talbot collaborations. They have a shorthand and an incredible love for each other, so they can say all kinds of crap to each other and then also be, like you said, very flexible, both of them, and very demanding of each other. You know, that there's like I feel like often it's so exciting to see like a huge amount of love backed up by a huge amount of responsibility to each other and to the play. I really liked that we had a character that was off stage that was always present in the room and I was just wondering what it was like to work in that capacity. I love that it's the audience in a funny way and it throws me all the time. Like it throws me all the time that I catch a glimpse of something. I made eye contact with people that I know by accident. It's just a nightmare. But I think it's actually really nice to have that sense that they're, you know, I don't know how it feels from the audience because I haven't done it, but that you're sort of <laughs> implicated in the, in the action of the play, literally, because this character you're talking about is, we place her sort of at shoulder level in the back row with two people. So, you know, we're not looking into anybody's eyes per se, but it's, it's, it's a constant sort of like feed of energy going that direction. So in a different way than I've ever had on stage, for sure. You know, and you kind of trust, uh, once, once it's established, you know, kind of trust, trust that she's there. She's mm -hmm. there.
One of my favorite moments of the show was that um, montage of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> which, which? What? The montage of swearing. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you were all very convincing. <laughs> do, do you want a chorus now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck ah, shit, motherfucker, ah, asshole. Bucket. Bucket. Son of a bitch. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs>